All right. Um, this tutorial is not going to be a beginner's tutorial. I mean, like the ones that I was doing before. Um, it's going to be just um, we're going to go through one of my tracks that I made recently, um, and we're just going to take it apart. And um, I'm going to show you like structure and um, arrangements and different ideas that you can use to make your tracks a little better and for producing tips and everything like that. Um, this track is called Snowy Forest, even though you see up here it's called Afternoon, but it's been changed since then. Um, it is a film score type piece, uh, chill out, electronica, like, it could, even, it could even be used for a game, people are telling me. Um, so let us uh, see how this track sounds, and then we'll take it apart a little bit. All right, so it starts off with some harps. Ready? get the basic idea of this track. I hope it's nice, I hope you guys like it. But anyway, um, let's talk about it a little bit. Where did it come from? How does it go about? And why is it arranged like this? And what you can do and learn from what I'm going to hopefully teach you um, in this video to help your tracks grow. Um, and we'll be covering other styles as well. As maybe we'll do some dubstep and some side trends and different things like that. Um, a lot of the plugins I use in this projects are mostly from Logic. There's a couple that um, are not native to Logic, but you can still find the sounds in Logic. Alright, so the track starts off with harps. Um, it's just a basic riff that I came up with. Um, just playing around with my Logic keyboard. I don't even have a MIDI keyboard. Um, but basically it's based in F. So first step of learning music is obviously, I mean, if you want to be a good producer and you want to be a good uh, music maker, you need to learn your keyboard. No matter where you are, you need to learn what every note is. Um, when I was using FL Studio, they used to have a little option up here for ABC, and uh, Logic doesn't have that, but it's kind of good because it kind of forces you to remember where you're holding and what notes you are. So this note over here is F, and the melody that I built is from the F major scale and uh, it's just a basic melody the sound is from Nexus uh, Angel's Harp has some reverb on it um, I put my own reverb on it too a blue reverb from the gold verb and uh, I just have it going for four bars right if you know what bars are music sometimes works in four bars four four timing I'm sure you heard that before um, so we have this is the intro. I mean, the whole intro is really building up for a while, but this is the first intro, is this little piece, you know? And so at the end of four bars, you want to bring something in, because if not, it's not that 
it's going to get boring for the listener, but you want to start bringing things in and start building your track up. So what I did is I bought in a flute and I bought in a bass section. The bass section is sounds like this. And it's playing the same note as the harp riff, which is F. So it's playing the root note to give it some body. And in the middle, we have um, just this flute that I have. Uh, where's my flute? There it is. You know, just... Uh, So as you see, it's one note moves up to here to this to this C because C is part of um, the F major scale, and I want to just throw in a little bit of a, of a variation. You don't just want everything playing the same note. You want to have a little bit of a mix-up, right? So now we have our first eight bars. We brought in two more instruments after the first four bars, but not too much because you still don't want to mess up the whole intro. You want to start bringing in things slowly and building up. Especially, I mean, it depends on what type of track you're doing, um, but this track is. A slow moving track it's going to be either for a film or for a game or something like that or maybe just easy listening so you don't want to bring in too much at once you want the listener to get into it um, so now at the end of eight bars ends one section and now we want to bring in the next we want to bring in the next section right so either you can keep on going with what you have you know if you're building it up but I decided to throw in a chord change right you want to throw in a chord change you don't want the F major riff playing the whole time so at bar nine, right? <laughs> and actually, he's a good dubstep artist too. But um, I changed up the harp riff, right? All I did was just copy and paste the F major riff. So I don't have to open up a whole new channel and everything. And I opened it up and I messed around with it. And I brought it down to A minor, right? Again, you have to learn your notes F, G, A, B, C. Now, we changed around this riff to an A minor riff. And because um, F to A minor is a really, really good chord progression, it sounds very nice. Um, in the circle of fifths, it works out very nicely with theory and keys and all these different things that I still don't. I mean, I studied it for a long time. Um, theory is kind of just built into me right now. It's hard to explain, but I got it down. Um, yeah, that's another thing you guys should learn is theory. But anyway, so we have F to A minor, right? And as long as we change the harp thingy, we also have to change the bass section, obviously. So the bass section is also at A to keep it more body. And we have this flute now. The flute is actually not playing at F, it's playing at C. Because C is also a common note between those two scales. And we wanted to add some more melody to it, so it sounds like this. Kind of gives it like that epic feel, you know, that chord change kind of gives it that epic feel. And we wanted to add something else in besides those three instruments we had originally, so we added in some cellos, right? This is also from Logic. We just I just played some keys um, on my keyboard, and we quantized it, and we bought it in. If you notice that I did some automation work on it too at the bottom over here, just simple automation, just in the volume. It comes in, it lowers down, it goes down, and then it comes back up at the end. It's like starts building up slowly. Um, so that's easy. You just click this guy, you know, and go there, and you just go to volume and you play around with him, and it works. Um, so now we have this section, which is the A minor section, right? And we don't want it going for too long because you want to keep on building up the song from F to A minor. You want to bring in more. So after that, I come back in with the F major parts. So as you see now, by the A minor part over here, we bought in the cello, right? So now also by this F part, we have to bring in the cello because if you didn't bring in the cello, the whole song would just have weird dynamics. It'd be like one part with the cello, one part with not. So you have to learn that you need to like work on that sound make it like you know keep it continuous and keep it um yeah keep it continuous and stable you don't want your sounds jumping around especially in a track like this you want everything to be like equaled up so besides for this cello now in the f major part we have this asian drum kit over here 
right? And um, I messed around with this automation a lot so that the drums would be sounding like very surrounded from you. And this is just the first drum kit. We don't want to bring in our drums right away, you know, too crazy. We want to just, you know, bring them in. Um, So right now I only have five instruments playing and it sounds amazing because you have your harps, it's one frequency. You also have to learn how to map out your frequencies is that this is like a more middle range sound, right? The flute is really high up, the bass is a very, very deep sound, the cello is also kind of mid-ranged and that's why this is panned to the left and this is panned to... that's panned to the right and this will be panned center. You don't want the frequencies messing up and then we have the drums. and they're all playing something different, but really the same thing. And it comes together as a nice sound, it gives it a full mix, it gives it a full body of a sound. And that is really good. And that will be what tutorial I have for you today, um, for the first part of song structure. And we'll go into more melodies and different things like that, and why we picked different things here and there. Um, please subscribe, check out the rest of my stuff, all my songs. Uh, FL Studio tutorials if you use FL Studio still and um, thank you very much